Part 1 of the review of the Liebherr LR 1750 Crawler Crane model in Wagenborg colours covered the assembly in a basic configuration. This second part looks at the details and features of the model and assembly of the full configuration. The crawler tracks are metal and have wide pads which represent the 2 meter track pad option of the real machine. They're mounted on really large heavy track frames which look impressive. The access platform around the crane is metal with some non-slip texturing. The cab has metal handrails outside and a reasonable interior although it could do with some mirrors, lights and wipers. The graphics on the side of the body are very good and there's no doubt this model looks great in Wagenborg colours. At the rear of the crane there's a textured surface on top of the engine. The ballast plates look good because of the paint and graphics and they're well detailed because of the usable lifting lugs. Although there are no hydraulic hoses going to the slewing motors they look good because of the toothed pinions at the bottom. And the auxiliary winch looks good if you put some thread on it. The A-frame has the same plastic pulleys as the rest of the model and is also a hydraulic hook which is used when the crane carries out self-assembly. The suspended ballast arrangement is impressive with 30 plates stacked up. And on top the connecting structure has a textured walkway and metal handrails. The lattice sections are all die cast metal and they're impressive. There are various Liebherr name badges and even the few plastic parts like the pulley frame have a good colour match. The luffing jib attachment also has high quality die cast metal parts. The two hook blocks supplied have free rolling plastic pulleys where perhaps metal would have been nicer. But the hook blocks are well made heavy parts. Even if you don't build it up, one of the plus points of the model is that it all comes in pieces like the real crane, so it does make a series of great transport loads, if you've got the right trucks. We'll start the features review by having a look at the crawler tracks separately. They are very heavy, but despite that you can roll the tracks very easily on the frame. They won't roll on a smooth surface just under their own weight, but on a rough surface you can make them roll. One of the smaller features on the model is the operator's cab which folds in for transport but also tilts up and down so the operator can get a good view when working at height. Another good thing is that although the model is very heavy it does rotate very smoothly on its turntable and there's no hint of rocking or unsteadiness. Now it's time to build the model up from its basic configuration by adding the derrick shown highlighted here. It gets built up by joining the component pieces specified in the instruction manual and it's possible to fully reeve the derrick system before attaching it to the crane. And the way to do that is to take some thread up from winch number 3 which is mounted on the derrick itself and then clip in the main boom bridle at the end and that gives you a good fixed arrangement with which to reeve it all up. And that makes it a lot easier than trying to do it otherwise. You then take the completed derrick and then by being careful and threading it through the various parts you can drop it into place into the connection point. Of course you won't see this method mentioned in the Liebherr erection manual for the real crane but that's really just because giant hands haven't been invented yet. Once the derrick's in place you fix it with plastic pins. The next part of this sequence is to split one of the suspension bars joining the main boom and then join it up to the derrick. And when that's done you join one of the suspension bars from the derrick to the A-frame. When you've joined up the remaining suspension bar the derrick is now online and controls the movement of the boom which can be operated by using winch number 3 on the derrick. One thing that needs to be sorted out is that any hoist ropes which come from winches 1 and 2 now need to pass up to the back of the derrick, down through the derrick and then up again. So just to show that here is some thread being taken off of winch drum number 2. It's then fed through the derrick and a little bit of plastic putty has been put on the end to help it fall back down through the inside of the derrick. And when you've had some fun playing this particular party game you can get the rope out at the end, take the plastic putty off and then feed it through the pulley and then up to wherever the hook is hanging. To enable the crane to lift more it has a suspended ballast arrangement as highlighted here and we'll now fit that on the model. The suspended counterweight hangs on a special frame so the best thing to do is to pre-assemble that before offering it up. And as with the rest of the model various plastic bolts are used to make the connections. The good thing about these parts is that they're all metal and they're going to take some very heavy loads when all the ballast plates are put on board, but there's never a feeling that any of the parts are not strong enough. Once the frame is built up it can be offered into the connecting point on the back of the crane and then again it's just pinned into place with more bolts. The only other connection required after that is to fix it up to the suspension bars which are hanging down from the top of the derrick. 
And once that's done, the counterweight tray has the ability to be suspended and add to the balance of the crane. There are then some detailed parts to add, and that's some metal handrails, and they just push into holes in the top of the connecting frame. With the frame now connected, it's possible to see one of the other features it has, which is that it's telescopic, so the counterweight can be moved out even further and add even more to the lifting capability of the machine. And this aspect of the model has been well engineered and implemented by Conrad. All that remains is to add the ballast plates to the frame, and there are 30 of them to add in three stacks of 10, and it really now adds some serious weight to the model. The last bit to add to obtain the maximum configuration of the model is the luffing jib as highlighted here. This can be done up in the air and the first thing to do is to attach the small fixed mast to the boom top. All that's needed is to attach the two small pistons into the cylinders and then close it up and then pin it at the boom top. You can then attach the luffing jib and here's one I prepared earlier. And if you're clever like me you'll find a way to make it float about as though it's got no weight at all. Once again our old friends the plastic pins fix it into position and then we can use the next high tech trick of a piece of string to tie the two back masts together to make reeving up easy. The manual isn't clear but to control the luffing jib you need to take the thread from winch 5. It then takes a route to the top of the main boom and cuts inside one pulley and then cuts back out and goes to the pulleys at the end of the fixed mast where you can then reeve up. Once that's done you can add a hook and you've got a really impressive model that's around 2 meters high. Not only that but as long as you've built it properly and secured everything it will also take a decent sized load hanging from the hook. And the load shown here is a metal model of a fermentation tank. Equally impressive with the model fully built up is that things such as the rotation of the crane is again still perfectly smooth and stable. And you can even move it along realistically using the crawler tracks. By the way, if anyone now thinks I'm going to lift the model up to show you underneath, I'm sorry, you're out of luck. The Liebherr LR1750 is a fine piece of model engineering by Conrad. It's been around for a few years, but this version in Wagenball colours looks great. The detail level is not the highest, but it's very well made, and it's hugely impressive when it's built up, making it an outstanding model.